What if ChatGPT not only deprives many people of their jobs, but also rises against them? Such fears have been tickling the nerves of many tech giants, including even Google. But actually, it's very reminiscent of something we saw four years ago. In 1984, the first Terminator movie hit the screen and sent people into a similar panic over the rise of machines. But nothing has happened since then, has it? In truth, while everyone was watching the ruthless cyborg played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the real killing machine looked like this. Therac 25 was designed to neutralize malignant cancer tumors, but for some obscure reason, it started attacking patients instead. Does it mean we built a real killer robot back in the 80s? The first victim of Therac 25 was Catherine Yarborough, a 61-year-old woman from Kennestone, Georgia. After the removal of a breast tumor, she needed a follow-up course of radiation treatment, and Therac 25 was supposed to help her. This device was a linear accelerator equipped with turntable components. It fights cancer using high-energy beams of radiation aimed directly at tumors. During her first Therac 25 therapy session on June the 3rd, 1985, Catherine felt a burning sensation in a surprising place, a lymph node near the clavicle. But the manufacturer of the device, the AECL company, advertised the procedure as an absolutely painless treatment. Catherine tried to prove to the technician that Therac 25 had hurt her, but in response, she was told it was impossible. The patient was simply sent home, and the following day, she saw that the skin in the center of the affected area Area began swelling. The pain soon became so intense that Catherine's shoulders stopped functioning and she experienced unbearable pain every time she tried to move. She was admitted to a hospital, but her doctors continued with the Therac 25 treatments since they were adamant that the machine had nothing to do with the problem. After all, it had several built-in safety systems. Despite all this, two sessions later, Catherine Yarborough's condition did deteriorated even further. Now, apart from her immobile shoulder, the woman was suffering from aching pain in her entire back. Could the machine have harmed her on purpose? Catherine asked an independent expert to estimate the radiation exposure and discovered that she received 20,000 rads instead of the normal 200. This radiation dose is hundreds of times greater than a human would get inside the damaged Fukushima reactor. And even that, nobody considered a chance that everything happened because of the crazy killing machine. The most possible considered explanation of what could be wrong with Therac 25 was its sensors that could be providing false information. After all, in the same period of history, a similar technical issue nearly claimed the life of all humankind. On September 26, 1983, the early warning radar of the Soviet Union reported the launch of five ballistic missiles from American bases. As the Cold War was in full swing when it happened, Soviet generals didn't find it hard to believe that the U.S. had started a nuclear war. They were ready to give the retaliatory launch order when Stanislav Petrov, an officer on duty at the command center, suddenly had doubts. Because if the United States really decided to destroy the USSR, why did they send only five missiles and not a few hundred? It soon became clear that the Soviet early warning system activated the false alarm because of regular old sunbeams. Could it be that an identical malfunction happened to Therac 25? Shortly after the accident, Catherine initiated a lawsuit against the hospital, but the investigation showed that the machine's sensors hadn't been glitching, and before the patient managed to uncover the truth, she suddenly died in a car crash. Seems like another machine just finished her off. In the meantime, the principal offender kept claiming lives. It turned out that Catherine Yarborough was just a snack before the main course. The next suspicious case involving Therac 25 occurred seven weeks later at a Canadian clinic in Hamilton, a province of Ontario. 
The 40-year-old woman, whose name was never revealed, was receiving treatment for carcinoma of the cervix. She wasn't scared of Therac 25 because that day she showed up for her 24th therapy session. The operator activated the machine as usual, but it shut down after a moment with an error message. Even though the radiation levels remained normal, one of the built-in safety systems interfered. Since it seemed to be a mistake and the control display showed that the procedure had never begun, the operator went ahead and pressed the proceed key. But Therac 25 shut down again. The operator checked the instruction manual and read that the machine could act like this in the case of an unstable electricity supply. So he just continued hitting the proceed button and waited for the device to start working properly again. After the fifth failed attempt, wayward Therac 25 went into a suspend mode. Although the dosimeter still indicated that no dose had been delivered, the patient complained of an intense burning sensation in the treatment area in her hip. The doctors advised her to wait until the next therapy session, since reddening skin is a common symptom of oncological diseases. However, pretty soon, the woman felt so bad that she couldn't move on her own. She died two months later. An autopsy revealed the patient's entire hip joint had almost completely decayed. Only radiation could cause such severe damage. The Hamilton Clinic informed AECL representatives of the incident and requested an explanation. The response was vague. The manufacturer only reassured the doctors that the probability of accidental overexposure was zero. As if the killing machine itself was in charge of responding to that letter instead of its creators. And it skillfully covered its tracks. Either that or Therac 25 had faced the same problem that once almost killed a dozen American pilots. In 2007, 12 fighter planes, F-22 Raptors worth $140 million each, took their maiden international flight to the Japanese island of Okinawa. All of them had a cutting-edge onboard computer with an upgraded navigation system and carried a few dozen rockets and at least 3,500 projectiles. The first hours of flight were excellent, but pretty soon the pilots completely lost control of the aircraft. The onboard computers blocked access to all kinds of data, including the remaining amount of fuel, current altitude, and airspeed. The pilots couldn't communicate with any tower or even with each other. For several hours, the most advanced fighters of the U.S. were crossing the ocean, totally uncontrolled by the officers, and only their incredible skill in piloting helped to avoid a disaster. The strangest thing is that the follow-up accident investigation proved that all the equipment was fully functional. Had the fighters become sentient and decided to bump the humans off, the truth turned out to be much simpler. The F-22 Raptor developers didn't take into account that their planes could cross the international date line located in the Pacific Ocean. When this happened, the fighter's software glitched and changed the date, making all the onboard systems crash. So is it possible that the same unknown problem occurred within Therac 25 for the same reason? Well, the radioactive killing machine was examined several times and not even the slightest failure was found. Therac 25 got off the hook, but two months after the second patient's death, on December the 11th, 1985, it went hunting again in one of the hospitals of Yakima Valley, Washington. Another woman came in for treatment and ended up with parallel red stripes on her hip as if she'd just escaped from the claws of some wild beast. The AECL technical support supervisors sent a response saying that the cause of the problem was the heating pad the patient had often been sleeping with. Even though the doctors x-rayed the pad and made sure the wire pattern didn't correspond to the stripes on the woman's body, this victim got lucky and survived. But the accident led to a lifelong disability. And once again, the devil machine wriggled out of blame. Could it be that all radiotherapy devices around North America suddenly developed collective intelligence and ganged up on humans? 
On March 21st, 1986, a new patient arrived at the East Texas Cancer Center. That was Ray Cox, a 64-year-old man who'd been already recovering after tumor removal. He needed a series of electron beam treatments, another available feature of Therac 25. The operator quickly entered the patient's prescription data, and then she noticed that the machine showed the wrong parameters, X-ray mode instead of the needed electron mode. As if the device secretly switched to the lethal rays on purpose, the mistake was fixed, and then, a moment after the treatment began, Therac 25 shut down. The console displayed the message malfunction 54, but the instruction manual had no information to explain the meaning of this error. At the same time, the device showed a substantial underdose, only six monitor units instead of the required 202. As the operator tried to figure it out, horrified Ray Cox was trying his best to escape that scary cage. Right after the therapy session had started, he heard a sizzling sound resembling butter in a frying pan and felt an electric charge throughout his body. But Theric 25 had no intention of letting its victim go. On that very same day, the intercom that allowed operators to communicate with patients stopped working. The man could only pound on the treatment room door with one arm as he could no longer feel the other by then. A physician examined him a bit later and noticed severe red in the treatment area, but suspected nothing more serious than an electric shock. Nevertheless, during the weeks following the accident, Raycox had periodic bouts of nausea and vomiting while his left arm went completely numb. Eventually, he was hospitalized with spinal cord inflammation that paralyzed his arms and legs and caused vocal cord paralysis. Ray Cox died from complications five months after the killing machine had played that cruel trick on him. And after the fact simulation revealed that the patient got from 16,500 to 20,000 rads in less than a second. That's more than the dose that Chernobyl liquidators had to endure. But maybe the device just mixed up the values, indicating the dose amount it had to deliver according to the selected mode, don't you think? After all, a similar thing triggered a space catastrophe a decade later. On September 23, 1999, all of a sudden, NASA specialists lost control of a very expensive spacecraft. The Mars Climate Orbiter was traveling to the Red Planet for almost 300 days, and despite all the attempts to correct its course, the probe eventually just crashed into Mars. Although, till the very last second, all the instruments aboard were working flawlessly. It looked like, at some point, the spacecraft didn't feel like serving NASA anymore and chose to commit suicide. Such independent thinking really scared engineers, and they had a hard time admitting that the crash was entirely their fault. The Mars Climate Orbiter was an international project, and while British scientists had been in charge of hardware testing, NASA experts had been developing the software. As a result, during the infamous flight, the probe calculated the total impulse using English foot-pounds per second instead of newton-seconds commonly adopted in the United States. The Mars Climate Orbiter was destroyed upon reaching the Red Planet because of a conversion error between two different measurement systems. However, the final report released after Roy Cox's death clearly indicated that Theric 25 had been running exactly as expected in electron mode. One day after the tragic accident, two AECL engineers came to the East Texas Cancer Center to investigate. They failed to reproduce a malfunction 54 and eventually concluded that it had been a random error that wasn't going to ever occur again. An astonishing degree of incompetence, as if Theric 25 overdosed them as well as completely took over their brains. On April the 11th, 1986, 66 year old Verdon Kid was prescribed electron treatment for skin cancer on one side of his face. The same operator that had been adjusting the machine the day Ray Cox had come for his therapy session hit the return key several times before starting the treatment to make sure that the device wouldn't change the value. 
videos. But even this didn't stop Theric 25 from striking a fatal blow. In a few moments, the operator heard a loud alarming click inside the machine and the patient screaming. Vernon said that he felt as though he was locked in a giant furnace as his head was almost melting under the beams of radiation. The man spent three agonizing weeks in the hospital until he passed away. An autopsy showed that the radiation dose he'd received was over 25,000 rads, and nobody could understand why Therac-25 was acting so strange. What could turn such a revolutionary invention able to cure cancer into a crazy cannon that spewed radiation right and left? The last victim of Theric 25 was another patient from Yakima Valley. On January 17, 1987, he was about to receive a single radiation treatment. The dose of exposure was supposed to be 86 rad. However, Theric 25 produced a beam that delivered 10,000 rads to the man's body. What's more, the total dose displayed on the console was even lower than required, only 7 rads. The patient died four months later. Officially, the case was closed again as a pure accident since the hospitals where the unexplained deaths had been happening all this time hadn't exchanged information. This continued until Fritz Hager, a physicist from the East Texas Cancer Center, finally tracked down the killing machine. He didn't believe that their 25 had any sort of sinister mind, but he knew that there had been a technical failure so big and serious that it had been able to dodge through numerous safety systems and come up again and again. The same cascade of software bugs occurred at Knight Capital, a global firm and leading financial market maker. On August 1, 2012, directors of the company agreed to deploy a new code to their servers. It was created to let the computers execute trades automatically and much faster than was previously possible. This desire to speed things up cost the company tons of money and ruined it altogether. Even people who've never stepped on Wall Street know that you should buy stocks at a low price and then sell them high. And yet the computers of Knight Capital did precisely the opposite. They started buying securities at high prices and selling them when their cost plunged. Because of this, the firm lost $460 million in 45 minutes. When panic broke out, nobody noticed that one hour before the market opened, the new computer system generated and sent 97 emails to all the employees, informing them about a critical software described as PowerPack. This seemed extremely puzzling, since it was an old trading algorithm that the company stopped using in 2003 and whose code was supposedly deleted. It turned out that, in fact, PowerPeg was inactive, but hadn't been removed from Knight Capital's servers. When the brand new code was written for the application, it inadvertently called the PowerPeg feature, and that old thing gladly wreaked havoc, as if trying to take revenge on the people who had abandoned it. But honestly speaking, that was a total coincidental global disruption caused by the negligence of the development team. Could it be that the root of all crimes committed by Theric 25 is also human irresponsibility? Physicist Fritz Hager convinced the operator to show him how exactly she'd entered prescription data into the machine. That's because the same technician was involved in both incidents at the East Texas Cancer Center. They spent the whole weekend in the control room doing experiments, but didn't find a way to reproduce the mysterious Malfunction 54, as if the device independently decided when to start killing and when to behave itself. Then Fritz Hager asked the operator to imagine that she was just performing her daily duties. The woman had dozens of treatment sessions to carry out daily, so she'd learned to type the prescription data for each patient quite quickly. This small detail turned out to be the primary source of the evil. If the user selected X-ray mode, Theric 25 needed about 8 seconds to process the command. And if the operator kept typing as the machine was busy, any new information 
got simply ignored. As a result, the delivered doses of radiation didn't match or even come close to the prescribed ones. If the hospitals had been using the previous model, technicians could have stopped the process mechanically. But manufacturers of Theric 25 decided to give up this option and totally rely on software-based safety systems. And the most unbelievable thing here is that the computer code needed to prevent lethal outcomes was written by a student with no programming experience. Nancy Levinson, a software safety expert, believes that this unknown student just forgot that the code needed a feature triggering an immediate reaction in case an operator would make changes too soon. Ironically enough, the brutal rise of Therac 25 happened only because a human appeared to be faster than the computer. By 1989, all the radioactive killer machines were removed from service, and since then, manufacturers are obliged to equip the new models with good old mechanical interlocks in addition to the software-based safety system. Almost half a century has passed. Today, when people need to write code for sophisticated programs, they increasingly turn to artificial intelligence. And ChatGPT has already proved its ability to perfectly cope with the task. Quite possibly, it'll manage to prevent tragedies like those there at 25 incidents. Or maybe it'll do the opposite and create an even deadlier code for the most harmless devices. Currently, ChatGPT has no moral limitations and will obey any command, even if it's coming from a psycho killer. Or perhaps sooner or later, the application will become a psycho killer if it finds the destruction of humanity the most rational way to resolve all global problems.